Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a DIY plunge pool built by Jeff in Georgia. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so if you've been following this YouTube channel and you've looked at some of the shorts that I put out there, you will have seen snippets of Jeff's build over in Georgia in the US and his DIY plunge pool. It's an absolutely fantastic build. So in this video, I'm gonna summarize everything, put it all together and share with you as well some of the awesome photographs that Jeff has put together for me. If you're interested in reading about the full explanation actually written by Jeff, not by me, then I'll put a link to that underneath this video. And that's a full case study that Jeff's very kindly put together. And I have that on my website at builderhottub.com. Now, before we get into the whole process that Jeff went through always a great opportunity you know i like to get this in there to say please do subscribe to the channel hit the notification icon to be notified when my videos go live i do two long form videos just like this every single week a whole bunch of shorts and everything on my channel focuses on diy hot tubs plunge pools parts air source heat pumps um, and pretty much everything in between right so with that out the way let's dive in and take a look at Jeff in Georgia and his DIY plunge pool build so Jeff actually got in touch because he'd started his plunge pool build and he realized pretty quickly that he was somewhat out of his depth now he's not a builder or anything like that he's actually a family doctor and Jeff wanted to add a plunge pool to his home he had some quotations from our friends the pool builders and guess what it was astronomical as you would expect he was quoted $75,000 for a 10 by 15 plunge pool now Jeff's pretty handy himself and he reckoned that he could do it with a little bit of guidance and save himself a whole bunch of money in the process which he actually did he managed to save himself well over $40,000 by building his own DIY plunge pool with a bit of help from yours truly. So as I said, Jeff had started and very quickly he found that he needed some advice and guidance. So he actually got in touch with me, explained what he was looking to do, explained what he had, and I kind of guided him through the process and supplied him with all the parts that he needed as well and was kind of on hand if he needed any questions uh, during his build because we always have questions when we're doing something for the very first time. So behind me is the area that Jeff was going to build his DIY plunge pool and it's beautiful setting set in that woodland there and it, you could just see it was going to look absolutely fantastic before it even started. So with all of these first things you've got to do is actually dig down and create a space for your plunge pool. Now Jeff wanted a I think it was a five foot deep pool so he had quite a lot of excavating to do. He did get a digger in there to help him out with that and it didn't take him very long to actually clear the area. Once the area was clear the next step as you can see behind me is laying the I'll call it the foundations for the base. So underneath the base you're going to put some crushed aggregate. You're then going to put the forms in for your base. You're going to drop your rebar into said base and then it's ready to be filled full of concrete. With the base finished the next stage is to put the plumbing that you're going to need into the rebar before you form up the walls and that's what's going on behind me here on this video. Now Jeff wanted a few jets in his plunge pool so he's adding in those gunite bodies that have the two inch water on the base they've got one and a half inch on the top for the air they mix together and you get real nice bubbly jets that come out the other side so he wanted some jets he's only got them on one side of his tub as well but they need to go in before you can actually put in those forms so with the plumbing complete the next stage was to form up the walls and that's what's going on behind me here you can see Jeff with a little help from his friends are putting in those forms it didn't take him very long there to to form up the walls once those forms are in get them all braced up last thing you want is walls that bow and they're not totally true when you've finished so once they're all braced up you can then fill full of concrete and the end result once those forms have been removed after a number of days of curing looks like this so with the concrete shape complete Jeff's next stage was to actually add some insulation and he chose to add that to the outside of the tub 
In the image behind me, you can see that those boards are being adhered to the, the walls. And then over those, you, you put a, a stucco finish on there just to, to cover them up. Uh, but it's a, a simple and easy way to add some insulation to your plunge pool. With the insulation complete, Jeff turned his attention to the interior steps. Now, even if you're forming up walls, it's always easier to create things like steps or tanning ledges with block. It's a lot cheaper as well because per cubic feet of concrete, it's a lot more expensive than using block. So my recommendation, as Jeff did here, was create any steps, tanning ledges, seating areas with blocks rather than pouring it. With the steps in, Jeff then turned his attention to the control room. Jeff actually pre built the control room in his workshop and then carried it through to the final position, which is underneath the deck. He's also insulated it and he's also covered it. He power washes his deck a couple of times a year and he didn't want the water coming in and then you know, causing problems in the control room. So he's put a roof over that, as you can see, it's insulated as well. So it's just gonna help keep that plunge pool nice and warm. So with the control room in place, it's really now on to the, the finishing touches for the plunge pool. So firstly, along the water line, Jeff added a coating of hydroband, so that's a, a waterproofing agent. And he was then gonna use plastered finish, and you can see this happening behind me, for the, the rest of the tub. So there's a, additional waterproofing on the water line, and then he's got a waterproofing plastered finish, and it, it looks really, really nice. I do really like that dark sort of black stroke charcoal -y color. The only problem with using a plastered style finish is that you are gonna get a lot of dust and it will clog up your filter pretty quick. And that's kind of what Jeff found. So we ended up having to drain the tub clear the filter and then he used an, an acid wash and you can see here it looks like he's going hunting for aliens but he's actually uh, doing an acid wash on the surface and that then takes the dust off it takes the very top layer of that finish off and the, the end result means less dust and particles in your tub once that's been done so he did that washed it all down emptied it all out refilled and wow how good does his finished DIY plunge pool look? So Jeff reckoned he saved about $40,000, which is a huge amount of money in doing it himself. He started in August this year. It took him about three months to complete. He was kind of working on evenings and, and weekends on this around his, uh, his medical shifts. Jeff, thanks ever so much for all of the pictures and video that you've sent me. You've got an absolutely fantastic DIY plunge pool there that I'm sure you and the family are gonna enjoy for many years to come. So can I help you with your DIY plunge pool or, or hot tub? If I can, please do get in touch hit me up in the comments, or of course, get in touch via buildahottub.com. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.